So in a lot of the videos that I record, I tend to have these overhead shots because I'm unboxing snakes or doing leatherworking or electronics or what have you. And I have to set up my camera on a tripod with the boon extended. And it kind of causes a problem where um, it's just difficult to work around. And uh, I wanted a kind of a rack solution to see if I could make things a little bit more stable and easy. I found this one online for $200, but figured I could do better myself. So I designed this in Blender um, to work with 3 quarter inch PVC. So here's the material list for that. I got one 3 quarter inch piece of 10 foot PVC schedule 40 for $6.29. Everything on here was bought at Home Depot. Six pieces of 90 degree elbows at 75 cents each. Four pieces of 45 degree elbows at a buck 48 each. Uh, six PVC tees at um, 86 cents, cents each. Four three quarter inch caps at 82 cents each. These are optional. And uh, after the king's tax, it comes out to $27.59 total for all of the PVC, which is pretty much everything. Um, now, optionally, you can paint it or design it in any way you want. So here I'm just stringing up the pieces and uh, I'm going to um, kind of put it on like a clothesline so I can paint it off the ground and I figured that was an easy way to paint it. I'm just using a matte black um, like primer. I don't even think it's paint. I think it's just primer that I used just so it wasn't PVC colored. And so you didn't have all the markings on there because the PVC comes with like stamps and markings that I've, I found unattractive. So I just wanted to paint it. But again, this is optional. So next I took all the pieces into the shop and began cutting them. There will be a full cut list uh, in the description and a, um, a diagram at the end of the video where you can see exactly if you want to replicate this, you can see exactly how to cut it up yourself. Um, a lot of these measurements are, you know, somewhat approximate to kind of play with them a little bit. I didn't have to make too many adjustments because I, I 3D modeled it and it was pretty accurate. But I mean, you may find that you have to trim a little bit here and there. Um, so first of all, I'm cutting these bottom pieces for the legs and connecting them together with one of the T's. And then I'm putting two 45, I'm sorry, excuse me, 90 degrees um, on either side. You can see that those go down towards the legs. Unfortunately, the camera cuts out later in the video, like right at the end. And um, and you don't see me install those, but it's just another piece with the cap on it for the, uh, for the legs. You will see in the final product. The part that I just installed are these two uh, vertical pieces. And those are going to adjust the height of the rack. So when you get to that point, if you want a taller or shorter rack, all you have to do is just cut those two pieces um, to whatever length you want, and that will adjust the height of it. And then there's one piece I'm about to install at the top that is the uh, horizontal piece, and that will adjust the width. I would recommend probably not going too wide because this is PVC and it does have some flex to it. And so um, kind of the shorter, the more secure it is. But I mean, you, I, I think... This stuff's pretty strong, especially three quarter inch PVC. You could probably get away with a lot in terms of making a pretty wide rack, especially if you're not using a heavy camera or lights or whatever you're hanging up on there. Um, anyway, the part that I'm working on now is these uh, the 45 piece, 45 degree elbow pieces, and that's just going to um, strengthen these corner supports uh, towards the top. And you'll see how those come together. It's also going to give me another place to attach lights and cameras and things like that. So here is that horizontal piece I was telling you about at the top. If you adjust the size of that one piece, then the entire rack goes uh, gets wider or shorter as um, as you uh, see fit. So the last pieces here I kind of had to do not by eye per se, but I had to make a few adjustments to get to make sure that these all matched up. <clears throat> but again, all these measurements are at the end of the video. I should also mention that uh, a lot of these connectors come with a smooth version and a threaded version because there's PVC um, adapters that are threaded. Uh, I did everything with the smooth version, so everything is uh, kind of friction fitted together. I do, I don't, you don't, I'm not going to see it on camera, but I do tap all these pieces together with a, a dead blow um, to tighten everything. I will probably make some of these pieces permanent with some PVC glue, but as of now, um, everything can be completely broken down. And you'll see at the end how it breaks down. So now what I'm doing is I'm testing the load before I put an expensive camera on it. I've got two 10-pound weights. Obviously, that's 20 pounds total. And I'm just uh, attaching it to the top with some paracord that I have, a little bit of clo uh, with a clove hitch if you're interested. And I just set it up to see. And you can see it does flex just a little bit. Um, it obviously rocks, but once the rock gets out of it, um, the things, I mean, it's pretty steady. 
and I'm pulling down on it to give it a little extra to see how it flexes and you can see I can put plenty of weight on here um, especially because the camera is the DSLR camera is going to be like two or three pounds um, even with a pretty large lens on it I, I can't see getting much heavier than five pounds um, I mean like max um, and this is 20 pound weights um, after I take it off the top I put it on one of these diagonal supports to see how sturdy those were and I think those are even more sturdy than the top piece so I will be hanging lights and things off of those as well and you could see I just kind of adjustment and tap it together and pretty happy with that. So now that I felt confident putting um, electronics on there, I take the whole thing down and uh, you'll see these two clamps that I'm using. This one I bought on Amazon. It's the only other piece for this project that I had to buy. Link will be in the description to this. And this piece here is called the Hercules. I use it for, for gigging when I'm a, I'm a musician. So I, I put my phone on here or tablet on here and I can have lyrics or chords with me on stage if I want to. Um, but it's also really handy for YouTubers as well. Um, or whatever you're doing, small business owners, whatever. So here I hook, I hook my phone up to it. And I, you see I tested on several different parts of the rack. I'm testing it on the top. I'll test it on a diagonal piece and even on the side as well. Um, if I can get this thing to start recording. There we go. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously it works pretty well. I'm testing. I'm kind of getting my hands in there to see about how much room I feel like realistically I have to work with. Um... Because I will, you know, there's only so much space in between these two legs. So if it's a particularly large product that I'm working on, um, it might be a little bit difficult to work around this rack. But for most things that I do, um, I should be able to work inside of the confines of this little rack system here. And like I said before, I'm testing it on the vertical supports as well as the diagonal supports just to see how all that works. And after I was comfortable with that, I switched cameras. So now we're looking from the phone and I'm attaching the DSLR to it. This is an Icon Z62, I believe. I always forget what model it is, but um, this is the camera that my dad so uh, graciously lets me use for everything. Um, so you see, I keep my hand on it, dad, the whole time. <laughs> so that was, even after all that testing, I'm still a little bit worried. And uh, yeah, once I was sure that it was, it was pretty rock solid, I'll let go here and I start looking at it and adjusting the, um, the focal length to see how easy that is to adjust and you can see with this uh what do you call it this clamp that i bought it's actually it's really rock steady and you can even have the camera facing like directly out and those uh it's got a like quite a large um base the, the foot base of it is pretty large so it's pretty sturdy in terms of that too it's not going to tip over and here i'm just attaching a little clamp light to it i'm going to buy a better one of these lights sometime soon but yes, you can also attach lights to this, and uh, I think this whole thing is going to work out really great. And it was really easy, it took just a couple of hours to build, like total, that's including painting and everything. And I'm really happy with it. So here are all the dimensions, if you want to make your own. Pretty easy to install. And then here is how uh, the whole thing breaks down. Um, and you can see even there, I have all these pieces still attached together. Or I have the legs and the, the corner supports still attached together. If you wanted to, you could break those down as well. It's kind of a, a hassle to, to take all this PVC apart by hand. So I would recommend leaving it together. But the piece does, uh, the whole kit does break down pretty small. So I'm going to sew up a little bag for it. And um, there you go. Camera stand for about $50 total if you include the camera clamp that I had to buy. Um as opposed to the $200 on Amazon. So I'm pretty happy with it. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. And um, I'd like to see if you guys actually go ahead and build one of these or something similar. Thank you very much. You have a great day.